Uh, moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, we look at the phenomenon of urbanization and is ASEAN ready? To take us through the discussion on this issue, please help me welcome our esteemed speaker, Oliver Tombi, managing partner, McKinsey & Company in Southeast Asia. Thank you, thank you. Could I just start by asking um, who in this room is uh, from Malaysia? Could you just put your hand up if you're, uh, you happen to be Malaysian? Okay, there are some of you. I, uh, my name is Oliver. I uh, first set foot in Asia May 21, 2003, here in KL. Slightly smaller room than this. I'm from Norway. It's irrelevant for what we're talking about, but it's very important to me. Never been to Asia before. Smaller room, I'm presenting something. And uh, from Europe, you know, you don't know that much about Malaysia, but you do know that it's a Muslim country. And suddenly my projector goes boof. The slide goes very dark. The room is completely quiet. And it's quiet and I utter, oh Jesus. There's a quiet voice in the corner that says, Oliver, I don't think he's gonna help you here. That was the day I fell in love with Malaysia. I had to move to Malaysia. I moved here for six years. Six years with the family. Um, I've, the last six years I've been living in Singapore. KL is one of my absolute favorite cities. I have a favorite spot in the city. Uh, on the corner, and I hope these houses are still there, on the corner of Raja Chulan Laut, um, there's a spot where you can see two old wooden long houses. You can see two-story buildings, five, ten, thirty-story buildings, and you can see the top of the Twin Towers. And when I stand there, that's when I feel that I'm living. I can see history in the making. And you're in a city with all the sights, sounds, smells, and tastes of all of Asia in the one place. You're in a city where you have kampungs where you can still see chickens running freely. At the same time, you have the most modern buildings, the most modern infrastructure that you can possibly have in, in the world. And this is the essence of urbanization in ASEAN. It's that essence of the duality between history and tradition and modernity, if I'm allowed to say that. That is what makes KL one of my favorite cities, and that's why I'm talking about urbanization here today. The question posed is, the phenomenon of urbanization, is ASEAN ready? Let me answer it this way. Maybe, but not so sure a lot. All right, now let's dig in a little bit. First, let's talk about some facts about the urbanization happening. And we're gonna start with a big global picture and then we're gonna come closer to ASEAN. I'm gonna skip over this. Fact number one. Cities drive a disproportional part of growth. So here you see cities on the x-axis and you see GDP growth on the y-axis. And what it shows is that cities drive a disproportional part of the growth. 600 cities, and these are global cities, 600 global cities are going to deliver two-thirds almost of expected GDP growth going forward. The reason for that is that there's a cycle, there's a cycle of increased demand combined with more efficient delivery of resources, of goods, and availability of people. So there, there, there can be a virtuous cycle that basically drives more and better GDP growth. Second fact, there is a strong correlation between urbanization and GDP per, per capita. You see the urban population on, the, on one axis and you see the GDP per capita on the other axis. And you know, it's pretty straightforward to see that there's a very strong correlation. There's a log scale on that y-axis. So it's a very, very strong correlation. Now, third fact. In ASEAN, we're going to see 90 million people moving to cities over the coming 15 years. You can see some of the countries in ASEAN there. Singapore, of course, is 100% and is going to stay at 100%. But you see the, the development of the other countries. Cities here are defined as cities with more than 200,000 inhabitants. 
So this is a strong trend over the coming years. We often talk about cities and we think about the Jakartas, the KLs, the Manilas, the, the, the Singapores of this world, but we often forget the middleweight cities. And you see in the middle of the chart, these cities defined as the 200 to 750, 750 to 2 million people. Those cities are gonna go, going to grow even more rapidly than the mega cities. So it's important that we don't forget uh, this. Let me give you an example of the importance of this. You see here Kuala Lumpur on the top. Today's GDP, or at least in 2013, is about $127 billion in 2013 prices. The expectation is it'll grow to about 300 plus billion in 2030. That's the size of Malaysia today. That's the size of Malaysia today. Our mega cities are going to be like countries. And then you can see some examples on the bottom of the next tier of cities, how they're growing in importance too. So long story short, there is a massive fact base saying urbanization is coming, and by the way, it drives GDP. It's a good thing. This is a good thing. What is the opportunity that we, uh, we see coming out of this? Urbanization goes hand in hand with consumption. It goes hand in hand with consumption. You see at the bottom, ASEAN overall, Today, 81 million consuming households. This will double in the 15 coming years. A consuming household is defined as an ability, uh, as an income, annual income of $7,500. That is basically when we see that people have discretionary spending. So there's a massive growth of consumerism coming. By the way, our Consumers are typically, much, uh, are typically young. They're much younger than other parts of the world. And you see here, 60 plus percent of our population is going to be under, is under 40 years old. The relevance of this, I put down on the, 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 on, on the right hand side, just some characteristics. We talk about millennials. Those are the ones that are born after 1980. Some characteristics. I have a love affair with online. Right? We see in Jakarta, they're spending up to eight hours a day online if they are connected. Uh, retailtainment. It's going to the shopping malls also to, be, to have entertainment there, not only for shopping purposes. Uh, my favorite one, the little emperor syndrome. Um, I hope there are not too many millennials in the room. Uh, little emperor syndrome. It basically means we see 68% of parents in ASEAN 68% of parents would rather spend the extra dollar on their kids than on themselves, right? So we have a, a, a population that are used to being um, doted upon, if I'm allowed to say it that way. Let's move on. We also heard, and we just had a panel, I'm not going to, but you know, there is a technology disruption coming. I think Liliana put it very well. There's a massive number of technologies. These are going to completely change the day-to-day -day lives in cities. I'm going to come back to some examples in a, in, a, in a little while, but this is a massive opportunity for good for cities. The final point on opportunity is the need for infrastructure spend. Uh, we estimate $7 trillion needed in ASEAN. Half of it, or 3.1 of it, in residential. Some, some people say that's not, uh, that's not uh, infrastructure. That, that, that's fine. You can define it as you wish. There is a massive need for money in infrastructure and in real estate, whether it's in transport, whether it's in power, or what have you. So we now seen some of the opportunities. What are some of the hurdles? And, and let's be clear, there are many sources of stress in a city. We see stress, chronic stress. We see stress re uh, related to resources or lack of resources. We know energy is one of those. We know water scarcity is sometimes happening. Uh, we see acute stress on the right-hand side. These are from hazards. And in our part of the world, we see more than our fair share of these relative to other uh, cities around the world, whether it's drought, whether it's flood happening as we speak. Cyclone Manila, one of the uh, highest cyclone um, uh, exposed cities in the world. 
And at the bottom, social stress, whether it's traffic congestion. Bangkok is built for two million vehicles. They have five million vehicles on the road. Uh, or whether it's, the or it's youth unemployment. I know it's something that Malaysia is taking very seriously, how to create jobs for the coming generations of youth. And these pain points, we see them popping up. This is one example. It's a Thai example. This is uh, Netizen, uh, this is chat in uh, Twitter. And these are the things that are coming up. And you see many of them related to urban issues, whether it's crime or it's transportation, or it's more broadly governance-related issues, such as education and, and, and the availability of education, or it's healthcare. We also took a quick look at we know infrastructure big opportunity. Is ASEAN ready to get this infrastructure and spend? And the answer is, hmm, not so sure. You just look at the state of readiness, and this is for different countries, assessed on the ability to do fact-based projects, uh, selection, streamline, delivery, and so forth. And you can see that there is not a lot of green on that page. Green is good, red is not good. All right, so there is work to do in terms of the delivery of the infrastructure. What is the way forward? We see that great cities do a few things well. Number one, they uh, try to achieve smart growth. What do I mean by smart growth? I mean they try to select competitive clusters, whether it's a finance, uh, financial services sector, it's a maritime sector, or what have you, but they focus on trying to build competitive clusters. They try to do so in environmentally forward-looking ways. They try to do more with less, more with less whether it is through PPPs, if we're talking about um, infrastructure, or they try to use modern technology. Basically, they get more out of every single dollar spent. And the final thing is they think about client service. They think about their own residents. I wanted to double click a little bit on technology because it is going to change the way we live in cities and it's going to change it for the better. These are just some examples. Uh, on, on logistics was mentioned in the previous panel. Logistics are going to be completely different in the future. This is a, a picture from, some of you noticed, uh, Singapore Post. They tested delivering post to Pula Ubin, which is offshore Singapore, using a drone. And that worked very well. That's a picture from that drone. Now, that's perhaps a little bit too far-fetched for now, but I spoke to the CEO, and they're very much looking at delivering using um, carts. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, unmanned carts is something they're looking into. So logistics is going to be completely changed in the city. We know driverless electric vehicles has the potential to change the city centers completely. Um, Distributed power generation. We have a shortage of power. We live in a part of the world where solar at least works in some places. We have rooftops. We're going to see this coming up. Last week, Apple just announced its, uh, its new facility in Singapore is going to be a positive energy contributor as opposed to tapping into the system. And this is also going to change the products. In the, in the middle here, uh, you know, e-malls, the, the, the concept of malls needs to change going forward. Right now we go there to shop, to see what's available to buy. In the future, we'll have done a lot of the shopping online first, testing out different. We will go there to pick up things. We'll go there for entertainment. It's going to completely change the concept of malls. Ride sharing. We typically use cars, those of us that have cars, on average somewhere between 6 and 8% of its capacity. The rest of the time it's parked. Now that's a, massively, that's a massive unused asset. Going forward, a concept of ride sharing, as we already know, whether it's Grab Taxi or Uber and these, now, is really going to reshape, we think, about communication. If you pull all these things together, what we're looking at is a completely new city. You're looking at a city where you can have growth. It's a connected city using technology. We will have growth. We will see people thriving. We will be more resource efficient. And it's going to be a much more livable city. 
Let me just end by saying the following. Now, whilst we might paint a future-looking picture, let's be clear, guys, the urbanization, it is already here. It is happening massively as we speak. We see, starting from the bottom, the total infrastructure spend going forward, I mentioned, was $7 trillion. That's three times German GDP. People joining the consuming class, those 80 million households, 250 million people, four times the population of Great Britain, and finally, 94 million people joining cities. That's three times the Malaysian population today. It's happening, and I at least am I a, an optimist. I think this is a better future in, in cities, if we play it right. Thank you very much.